God bless you. I'm Brenda Divers, Heart Ministry Radio Network, and we are Dancing in the Desert. Tonight we're going to talk about the helmet of salvation and how that assists us while we're in our desert experiences. Stay tuned. Joining us here at Heart Ministry Radio Network and the Doors to Your Heart. I am Brenda Divers, your host, and again, so thrilled, so glad that you were able to spend this time with us. We're still in our series, Dance in the Desert, and we're almost through with the mini series on the full armor of God and how it aids us while we're in those desert times, those dry experiences that we all have, um, how that helps us. So, first, we talked about what? The belt of truth and how we had to know that we know that we know that the word of God is true. And then we had the breastplate of righteousness. And we know behind that breastplate was what our heart and all of our vital organs and the, the belt of truth held that in place, right? And then we had to make sure we had the right shoes on, that we could be prepared and fitted, ready for the gospel of peace, to take the gospel of peace, right? And we talked about the shield of faith and how if we raise that shield of faith, how it extinguished all, not some, but all, of the fiery darts of the enemy. And tonight we're going to talk about the helmet of salvation. And, and tonight we're going back to Ephesians chapter 6 and we're going to read the A portion of verse 17, which says, and take the helmet of salvation. Right? Just that part. Take the helmet of salvation. And honestly, I thought that was, that was odd when I first read that. Why would we need a helmet of salvation? When in Ephesians, he's talking to the saints of God, right? We already have salvation. We've already received Christ as Savior. Why do we have to wear a helmet of salvation? And he's certainly not talking about losing your salvation. He's talking about why we have to be covered in that. So we know that what? A helmet. Let's go back to the Roman soldier. And he wore this helmet. And it looked different depending on the age of it. But, of course, they had something in the front, something to protect the the ears and the cheek, the face, and had even something in the back sometimes for the neck protection. And you know, I also was just looking up helmets and saw an interesting clip on the military helmet and how sophisticated it is these days and how even there's certain caliber um, bullets that it'll just deflect. You know, I said, wow, you know, that was so interesting. That head, it's so important. If we don't protect our head, then what? If the head goes, the bodies go. The body goes, right? So we have to, although we are saved, we have to wear that helmet of salvation on us at all times because we could be saved, but acting like we don't have Christ in us at all. You know, have you seen people who profess to be Christians, but when they live, you couldn't, you couldn't pick them out from the world, right? We all have something that's within us, that we have to submit. We have to submit daily you know, to the Lord. We have to wear that, that salvation, right? And again, it has nothing to do with losing your salvation. It's the, the grace that we're living in. And our, one of the scriptures we want to read to you today is Ephesians chapter 2, verses um, 8 and 9. I'm going to read that in its entirety. It reads, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. For by grace are we saved through faith, right? So our walk has to, has to reflect faith in our Lord and Savior. It has to reflect that. And I know we, we pray all the time, Lord, I want more of you, I, I need this, I need that. 
And certainly he tells us in Second Peter um, 1, verse 3, that everything that we need for that pertains to life and godliness that we already have. So why don't we see that? What is it that's going on that we don't see that grace, that we don't see everything God says that we, that we um, already possess? And it's living by the grace, right? Through, by grace, through faith. By grace, through faith. It is our faith that operates. It's our faith in, in Christ and what he told us to do. It's walking in the faith that we kind of, that we implement the grace. Because everything that God has for us, he's already given. He's, it's already done. How do we tap into it? Through faith. Through our giving through just how we're living our lives, not, he said, don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And then what happens? The peace of God that passes understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So the helmet, a helmet is worn what? To absorb a blow. A helmet is worn to absorb the blows. Because if our head is injured, we can't take care of ourselves or other people, right? You see maybe people who have been in sports or sometimes even with age that um, dementia could set in or, you know, certain neurological um, diseases happen as a result of head injuries. And how with that person, their functionality is very limited because what? The brain was affected. We have to put on the helmet of salvation, reminding us of who God is and walking in the things that he's called us to do by grace, through faith, right? And because we trust our Father so much, the works, we can't do enough works because we trust him so, not that he'd like us any better, right? But that we are walking in the thing that he told us to do. Have faith. Faith pleases God. But if we are living our lives without our helmet of salvation, we're allowing anything in, we're allowing any and everything in. And at the end of the day, people couldn't pick us from an unsafe person because of how we live our lives. We have to remember the grace of God that he's given us and how we, how we came to him by grace, what? Through faith, right? And again, I, I love this um, analogy someone used. They're talking about power and how your house is, is already wired for power. And you can't call the electric company and say, I need more power. What are they going to tell you? Have you turned the switches on? Have you tried this? Have you tried that? Everything, all the power that we need is already there. We just have to tap into it through faith, right? God has given us everything, he said, that we need it as it pertains to life and godliness. But if we're not walking in faith, then we're not receiving any of that. We're just kind of tossing. We're just... Going through, the, going through the motions. You know, I talked to someone um, a couple weeks ago, and they just talked about how they were going through the motions, but how God woke them up, how they were awakened to who God is and his power in their lives and his mercy and his grace and how years and years she was just kind of going through life. But now she's awakened now because she realizes who her father is and walking through faith to do those things he called her to do. We can't do enough. So wearing that helmet of salvation reminds us of who we are in Christ. It reminds of how we came to Christ, that he chose us before the foundation of the world, that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And all we have to do is by faith receive the things that he's told us to do. Put on the helmet of salvation. It'll absorb those blows that come to you. You know, you're, you know you've heard these things. You'll never amount to anything, you know, or you, you don't try to go into this field because you're, you don't have the, max, the mental capacity for it. You know, who told you you didn't have it? Did God say that? No, people did. And it, you, you absorbed that. That was a blow to your head. Who said that you were ugly? God made you beautiful. Another blow to your head. So everything that you're doing is out of the pain or out of the injury that you have been experiencing. We have to put on the helmet of salvation. We've got to protect our minds 
we have to protect the things that we allow into our space, the people we allow into our space, and the things that we allow our eyes and our ears and our hearts to absorb. We've got to put on the helmet, reminding ourselves that by grace through faith, we came to Christ, and we have to represent him well. And walk this walk through faith. Faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. And the helmet of salvation is walking us through. We know salvation is, we're going to, be part of it is that what? We're going to, to see Jesus one day. But there is another sanctification process that we're walking the whole time we're here. That we, he said everything we needed was already there. 1 Peter 1, 3. So where is it? Where is it? We walk in it through faith. We experience our life through faith. God has already given us the grace. But when we tap into that faith that he's talking about, then he can't give us enough. Then we have to step back and say, oh, God, God I, can't, I can't take anymore. Don't you want to be there? I want to be there. We have to put on that helmet because the helmet absorbs the things that are thrown your way. The helmet absorbs it because, again, the more concussions, the more brain injuries we get, the less functionality we have. The less functionality we have to work for our Savior, work in our families, in our neighborhoods. We don't have the mental capacity to do anything because we've had so many blows to the head, so many blows to the back of the neck, so many blows, right? And our mental capacity has been impaired. What's on your mind today? What are you thinking today? How are you walking before the Lord today? Have you tapped into the grace that he said he's given us? Are you calling the electric company and said, turn on my power and it's already there? You flip the switch? What does that flip the switch look like to you? Are, you? are you taking God at his word? Are you giving in a manner that he says give? Right? Are you helping people in the way he's are you putting your hands on people the way he told you to do right we have to trust our God and it's interesting that sometimes even with the, the laying hands on people and you don't see a result right then you think wow maybe God didn't tell me to do that or um, I don't have the power you just do what he tells you to do the results are his sometimes it's immediate and sometimes it takes it takes a process but you be obedient to the call of Christ on your life. You wear that helmet of salvation and walk in faith. Right? We're going to talk about the sword of the spirit next week, but the helmet of salvation, we have to protect our minds. We have to protect our minds because, again, if we're not absorbing those blows, our mental capacity is going to be impeded. We are not going to be able to be fun We are not going to be able to function in a manner that pleases God. He has a divine purpose for all of us. And if we don't walk by faith and tap into the grace, then again, we're leaving all of this behind, all the things that God said that we have. Don't you want them? Don't you want to be close to your Father? And it's not just material peace, just the peace of God. The peace of God that you can't buy, you can't buy peace. And that peace that he gives us if we walk by faith, right? He tells us what? To worry about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let our request be made known unto God. And then what happens? The peace of God that passes understanding will guard our hearts and minds. Yes, Paul's talking to the, the saints at Ephesus. He's talking to us today. Those who has, have accepted Christ as Savior, there's a helmet of salvation that you have to wear. You have to walk through this life pleasing your Father. You have to be a witness for people. Sometimes you won't even be, a, be able to open your mouth to them, but they see the life that you're living. And they want or not to be represented by God. If you look like this and you're representing Jesus, I don't think I want Jesus if that's the way, you know, if you're mean. For me, oxy, an oxymoron is a mean Christian. <laughs> How can you be mean and call Christ your Savior? How can you be devious and call Christ your Savior? Because we're not wearing that helmet of salvation. We're not tapping into the power that he's given us by faith. His grace has already been established. We have to walk by faith. 
and do those things that he called us to do. And if we are trying to please God in all we do, that's what's going to be represented in the earth. What do you want to be represented for your life? Even in, de in desert situations, we don't get a pass. We talk about this so often, we don't get a pass. If we are in a hard time, we don't get a pass if we know Christ is Savior. We still have to maintain a life that's pleasing to him. Do we falter? Do we fall? Absolutely. But then we what? We confess. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We don't get a pass because everything that we need compared to life and godliness, God says we have. So we, have, we ask God, help my unbelief. I believe, help my unbelief. We know that once we leave here, that we're going to be in the presence of God. But how are we living while we're here? Are we living like we have escaped hell, or are we living like we're in it? How are we living? And it's up to us, because we all have the power. If we have the Holy Spirit within us, we all have the power to live victorious lives. We just have to get, we've got to do the work. We've got to get in his word. We've got to pray to our Father and wait until he answers. We have to commune with our dad. We have to have it. We have to wear the helmet of salvation. We have to. Because what? If our head is being banged around, there is nothing to absorb. And then dementia can set in and all these other things. And we're not going to be able to perform to our capacity because we didn't protect our head. Are you protecting yourself tonight? What scriptures are you eating? Are you hiding his word in your heart that you will not sin against him? That should be our desire. I, every day we have to, you know, every day we've got to renew ourselves. He wakes us up with new mercies every day. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Every day we have new mercies. So walk. Walk like you are a saint of the Most High God. Represent your daddy well. And at the end, you will hear well done because you have what? Done well. So while we're in this desert experience, wear your helmet. Remind yourself through the word of God who you are and walk in faith because the faith taps into the grace. And he says through that he's given us everything, everything.